Hi there. Welcome back, and I'm so glad that you've joined me for this day number 241. Today we read 1 Chronicles 8, our first reading in Proverbs 17, and we reread Ephesians 6. Let's open to 1 Chronicles 8. Hang on, we're almost through with the names chapters. 1 Chronicles 8 Heading The Descendants of Benjamin Benjamin had five sons. In order of age they were Bela, Ashbel, Ahara, Noha, and Rapha. The descendants of Bela were Adar, Gera, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gera, Shephufan, and Huram. The descendants of Ehud were Naaman, Ahijah, and Gera. They were heads of families that lived in Geba, but which were forced out and went to live in Manahath. Gera, the father of Uzzah, and Ahihud led them in this move. Shaharaim divorced two wives, Hushim and Ba'ara. Later, when he lived in the country of Moab, he married Hodesh and had seven sons, Jobab, Zibia, Mesha, Malcam, Jeuz, Sakia, and Mirma. His sons all became heads of families. He also had two sons by Hushim, Abitub and Elpaal. Elpaal had three sons, Eber, Misham, and Shemed. It was Shemed who built the cities of Ono and Lod and the surrounding villages. Heading The Benjaminites in Gath and Aijalon Beria and Shema were heads of families that settled in the city of Aijalon and drove out the people who lived in the city of Gath. Beria's descendants included Ahio, Shashak, Jeremoth, Zebadia, Arad, Eder, Mikael, Ishpa, and Joha. Heading The Benjaminites in Jerusalem El Pa'al's descendants included Zebadia, Meshulam, Hiski, Heber, Ishmerai, Izlia, and Jobab. Shimei's descendants included Jakim, Zikri, Zabdi, Elienai, Zilethai, Eliel, Adaya, Beraya, and Shimrath. Shashak's descendants included Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hanania, Elam, Anthothija, Ifdeya, and Penuel. Jeroham's descendants included Shamsherai, Sheharia, Athalia, Jaareshia, Elijah, and Zikri. These were the ancestral heads of families and their principal descendants who lived in Jerusalem. Heading, The Benjaminites in Gibeon and Jerusalem Jael founded the city of Gibeon and settled there. His wife was named Maaka, and his oldest son, Abdon. His other sons were Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zakaria, and Mikloth, the father of Shimea. Their descendants lived in Jerusalem near other families of their clan. Heading The Family of King Saul Ner was the father of Kish, and Kish was the father of King Saul. Saul had four sons, Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Meribbaal, who was the father of Micah. Micah had four sons, Pithon, Melech, Tarea, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jehoada, who was the father of three sons, Alimeth, Azmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza, Moza the father of Binea, Binea of Rapha, Rapha of Eliasa, 
and Eliasa of Azel. Azel had six sons, Azricam, Bokeru, Ishmael, Shearia, Obadia, and Hanan. Azel's brother, Eshek, had three sons, Ulam, Jeush, and Eliphelet. Ulam's sons were outstanding soldiers and archers. He had a hundred and fifty sons and grandsons in all. All those named above were members of the tribe of Benjamin. Let's turn now for our first reading in Proverbs 17. I highlight another proverb, and I must say that it's hard to choose just one verse to highlight in today's reading. Verse 9, Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. Proverbs 17 Better to eat a dry crust of bread with peace of mind than to have a banquet in a house full of trouble. A shrewd servant will gain authority over a master's worthless son and receive a part of the inheritance. Gold and silver are tested by fire, and a person's heart is tested by the Lord. Evil people listen to evil ideas, and liars listen to lies. If you make fun of poor people, you insult the God who made them. You will be punished if you take pleasure in someone's misfortune. Grandparents are proud of their grandchildren, just as children are proud of their parents. Respected people do not tell lies, and fools have nothing worthwhile to say. Some people think a bribe works like magic. They believe it can do anything. If you want people to like you, Forgive them when they wrong you. Remembering wrongs can break up a friendship. An intelligent person learns more from one rebuke than a fool learns from being beaten a hundred times. Death will come like a cruel messenger to wicked people who are always stirring up trouble. It is better to meet a mother bear robbed of her cubs than to meet some fool busy with a stupid project. If you repay good with evil, you will never get evil out of your house. The start of an argument is like the first break in a dam. Stop it before it goes any further. Let's reread Ephesians 6. In our translation work in Indonesia, our translation helps the reader understand how the various parts of the armor are actually applied or picked up and worn. So I will read the translation of our Indonesian translation called the Plain English Translation when we come to verse 10 and all the way through verse 17. Ephesians 6 Children, it is your duty as followers of Christ to obey your parents, for this is the right thing to do. The command, respect your father and mother, is the first commandment that has a promise added. Quote, so that all may go well with you, and you may live a long time in the land. End quote. Parents, do not treat your children in such a way as to make them bitter. Instead, raise them with the discipline and instruction approved by the Lord. Slaves, obey your human masters with fear and trembling, and do it with a sincere heart, as though you were serving Christ. 
Do this not only when they are watching you because you want to gain their approval, but with all your heart do what God wants as slaves of Christ. Do your work as slaves cheerfully, as though you served the Lord and not merely human beings. Remember that the Lord will reward each of us, whether slave or free, for the good work we do. Masters, behave in the same way toward your slaves and stop using threats. Remember that you and your slaves belong to the same master in heaven who judges everyone by the same standard. As final instructions, you should each become strong because you keep on hoping completely in the Lord's amazing power and also because you have become one with him. Just like a soldier wears his equipment for war, you must wear all the battle equipment that God gives us. In that way you can reject the devil's lies. For we aren't fighting against people on this earth, but we fight against evil spirits and all the powers who rule those evil spirits. They're the ones who now control this dark world from the sky above. That's why you need to use all the tools of war given by God, so that when the enemy comes to attack you, you won't run, but can oppose him and keep enduring until the war is over. So stand firm, hold on to the true teaching from God, because true teaching is like a belt that makes you ready to act. Live a righteous life, because a righteous life is like a metal vest that will protect you from the enemy's attacks. And keep holding on to the good news about Christ. That news helps you to feel calm in the protection of God. Continually hold on to that news, just like a soldier always wears strong boots so that you can stand firm in war. Besides that, keep believing in the Lord, for your fully believing is like a shield that protects you from all the flaming arrows that the devil shoots at us. Keep on being certain that God has saved you, because that is like your war helmet and hold on to all of God's words like holding a sword, because His words have the power of the Holy Spirit. Do all this in prayer, asking for God's help. Pray on every occasion as the Spirit leads. For this reason, keep alert and never give up. Pray always for all God's people, and pray also for me, that God will give me a message when I am ready to speak, so that I may speak boldly and make known the gospel's secret. For the sake of this gospel, I am an ambassador, though now I am in prison. Pray that I may be bold in speaking about the gospel as I should. Tikikus, our dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord's work, will give you all the news about me, so that you may know how I am getting along. That is why I am sending him to you, to tell you how all of us are getting along and to encourage you. My prayer is that God the Father and the Lord Christ Jesus will give you peace, love, and full belief. May God's grace be with all those who love our Lord Christ Jesus with undying love. Let me start us in our prayer today. Lord Jesus, it has been your will and design that we have not been taken out of the world, but left in it as resident aliens to be your representatives here. 
Help us to fully realize our position in union with you, because the truth about our new identity is actually our spiritual armor. So help us to fully believe all the truth you have given us, so that we will stand firm when we are under spiritual attack. Lord, this attack can come from what people say or do, but it can also be an inward battle against all sorts of negative messages from the evil one. Help us to hold on to the truth against both kinds of warfare against us. Help us that we will live out the righteousness you have given us, as this is our body armor. Make our foundation in the good news secure, because this gives us a firm place to stand and gives us inner peace. May our full belief in you shield us. May we keep our gaze on you when we're under attack. Give us assurance of our being saved by you, as this is the helmet protecting our minds. Help us to keep your word in our minds daily, so that we will be able to use your word in our conversations and in our defense. And our cell phone direct connection to your throne is prayer. May we pray on every occasion, give thanks in all circumstances, and never give up. 